Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. According to the United Network for Organ Sharing, that's the organization that manages the U.S. transplant system, there were about 35,000 people in the United States who received a lung transplant in the first eight months of 2017. Now, that sounds like a lot, but there are still around 1,600 patients on the waiting list for a lung transplant. And there are actually more that could benefit if we had more donor lungs available. Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, in collaboration with United Therapeutics, hopes to do just that, make more donor lungs available for transplant through a process known as lung restoration. Joining us on the telephone today to discuss lung transplant and lung restoration is Dr. David Erasmus. Dr. Erasmus is medical director of the lung transplant program at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Erasmus. Thank you very much. Uh, good to be with you. Thanks, Dr. Erasmus, for uh, for joining us. You know, it seems like that there are more lung transplants being done today than previously. True? That is true, but there is also a shortage of donors, and that hasn't changed. Uh, and because uh, more and more patients are being listed, uh, there's definitely a shortfall. How many lung transplants are done at Mayo Clinic? Uh, in Mayo Clinic, Florida, we do, uh, on average, about 40 to 45 transplants a year, and then uh, additionally, uh, uh, you know, a 10 to 20 uh, in Rochester, so uh, approximately, I would say, 60 to 65 per mm-hmm. year if we combine the two centers. And when you do a r- lung transplant, is it normally just one lung or both lungs? Well, that would depend on the patient's underlying condition. Uh, there are certain uh, diagnoses which would require double lung transplantation. Uh, patients, uh, for instance, have very high pressures in the circulation in the lung called pulmonary hypertension would would necessitate a double lung transplant or patients uh, that have a disease process where there is an underlying infection that has caused the lung problem, uh, such as patients with a diagnosis of bronchiectasis would require a double lung transplant. But there are also other diseases where a single lung transplant can be uh, a very good option, you know, patients with pulmonary fibrosis or emphysema might do well with either a single or a double lung transplant, uh, depending on uh, their individual uh, circumstances and also dependent on uh, the nature of the donor, which uh, may may come along. How often are donated lungs not suitable for use, presenting, of course, leading or helping with the shortage? Yes, you know, if one looks at all the transplant centers across the nation, Uh, we see that approximately 80% of all donors, uh, and we're talking about uh, brain-dead donors, uh, when we we look at the statistic, about 80% of all those donors, uh, the lungs are not utilized for various reasons. And in other words, 20% of all brain-dead donors, uh, the lungs are utilized. Uh, Give us the most common reasons that you would end up doing a lung transplant. What, What kind of patients are these? What diseases do they have? Well, the most common reason for transplant at our center tends to be uh, for a disease process called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is a a disease which causes scarring in the lungs. Uh, The reason uh, for this is not uh, clearly uh, determined. We don't know the the cause or the etiology of it, Uh, but we also transplant a significant number of patients with end-stage emphysema. Uh, patients with bronchiectasis, uh, patients, younger patients with cystic fibrosis, and other patients who've failed medical therapy with with uh, pulmonary hypertension, which is a disease which causes uh, the high pressure in the circulation in the lung. You don't do uh, it for lung cancer, though. Uh, generally speaking, lung cancer is a contraindication to transplant because uh, after transplant, these patients require immunosuppressive therapy. We have to knock down the immune system to prevent rejection. And uh, there's always a chance in somebody who has lung cancer, even if the cancer is removed, that there may be cancer cells elsewhere in the body. Mm -hmm. And if one knocks down the immune system, that could flare up. So uh, lung cancer, as a general rule, is considered a a contraindication to transplant. But there are very rare cases where patients with a, a rare type of lung cancer called alveolar cell cancer have successfully undergone uh, lung transplantation, but uh, that's something that falls into the realm of of um, uh, the controversial indications, I would say. Well, tell us about lung restoration. What does it what does it mean? So, uh, it, uh, lung 
restoration is actually an, an option that uh, has come to light over the last uh, decade or so, where uh, lungs can actually be uh, taken from the donor and they can be attached to a, a ventilator outside of the body and, then, and a, um, a blood substitute or blood can actually be uh, circulated through the lungs and then these lungs can be evaluated in a, in a, as it were, a lab setting almost, or an OR setting, and certain parameters can be evaluated to see whether these lungs would actually uh, be suitable for for transplant, uh, such as the pressure in the in the airways or in the circulation, and uh, blood samples can be taken from those lungs. Bronchoscopies can be performed on those lungs outside of the body, and X-rays can be taken. And uh, potentially therapies could be administered in the future, but uh, you know this this would allow us to uh, evaluate lungs that we might consider borderline or may may generally turn down uh, because we don't have that level of confidence. So you're that, making a donated lung healthier. We could potentially make them healthier and also uh, have a better evaluation of these lungs. Uh, sometimes the lungs after brain death, become flooded with, uh, with fluid called pulmonary edema. And if one puts these lungs on a circuit with a, with a high protein uh, content in, the, in the, what we call the perfusate or the blood uh, substitute, that actually draws the, the excess fluid out of the lung tissue into, uh, and, and, can, and, and can actually improve the function before transplant. So what you're really doing is a lung checkup to see if the lung itself is suitable for transplant. And in the future, um, you hopefully may be able to refurbish that lung so it will be uh, able to be transplanted. That is true. You know, this is technology that is not, is not new. It has been, it has been um, utilized at various centers around the country, but at the moment is, is available uh, on a humanitarian use device, uh, device type of uh, protocol uh, with, with a given uh, transplant center. So it, it does not yet have IRB approval for, uh, for use outside of a, a, a tightly controlled protocol. Uh, but the, the center that really pioneered this this uh, work, uh, at least with the system that we're looking at using, has been the Toronto uh, group, and they've had very successful outcomes so far. And so uh, really what we're looking at doing is trying to um, emulate that, but in a scale in which um, it, it can be streamlined and, and made more widely available. All right, so uh, and you're actually building a lung restoration center in Jacksonville, right? That is true. Uh, you know, so we're looking at uh, hope, kind of hopefully construction on that would be uh, completed sometime in 2019. And uh, then uh, at that time, we should be uh, up and running with... Um, a warehouse full of lungs. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, well, that would be great. So there's still a fair number of people out there who need a lung transplant. That is true. All right, Dr. David Erasmus, Medical Director of Mayo Clinic's Lung Transplant Program, joining us by telephone from Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks, Dr. Erasmus. Thank you very much.